South Florida is one of a kind. With this kind of music, food, and flair, there's no question why so many people are flocking here. But as the population and skyscrapers continue to rise, so do the sea levels and floodwaters. High tide. High tide. That's salt water. Show me, what's your flooding problem? What happens? Okay, I get the back. When it's a lot of wind, the back is flooding, and I'm making the water go this way. You know, the street is full of water. We met Luckner Germinal as he was renovating his Miami home, which he's owned since 1994. He's about two and a half miles from Biscayne Bay. And flooding here is getting worse. So bad, it sometimes causes his septic tank to back up into his home. The human waste inside the exactly. house. Exactly. All over here. Yeah. Water. All Just over like here. here water. I get uh, the storage, you know, I put it in the block. So if you I... put this shed yeah. up higher. Yeah. If not, uh, the water goes inside where here. South Florida is experiencing more nuisance flooding than ever before during storms, of course, and on days with high tides. That's called sunny day flooding. The problems ultimately trace back to torrential rains and sea level rise. Projections from NASA and NOAA are alarming. Levels are rising at record rates, and if we keep this pace, much of the state's coastal areas could be underwater by 2060. By 2100, major cities could be unlivable. South Florida is just the tip of the iceberg, a canary in a coal mine for a global problem. South Florida is one of the most vulnerable areas of the country that's already experiencing, unlike any other part of the country. The problem is already here. We are already seeing the flooding twice a day during fall. So this is one of the most vulnerable places in the country, but also probably in the world. I have a long name, Dr. Jayanta Obesekara. I'm a research professor in the Institute of Environment Sea Level Solutions Center. For solutions to sea level rise, we went to the Sea Level Rise Solutions Center at Florida International University in Miami. We are trying to develop solutions for not only for now, but also for the future when we know that the problems are going to increase in magnitude. FIU deploys these autonomous boats into the bay, measuring temperatures, salt levels, and pollution. Floodwaters run off into the waterways, bringing with them chemicals and trash, which kills fish and plants, making the situation even worse. Education, getting people involved, is key. I think we are not doing enough to manage the greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, and that is ultimately the long-term solutions. But I think along with that, we need to get the younger generation and everybody involved in participating. While climate change can be a politically charged topic, cities across the southeastern U.S. are noticing the situation getting worse right before their eyes. In Hollywood, Florida, it's all hands on deck. How do the residents in this area respond? What do they have to say? The residents are welcoming this improvement because this is something that affects them on a day-to-day -day basis. The city's Community Redevelopment Agency is pouring money into road projects. This boat ramp right next to a low-lying neighborhood was just the start. There goes the water, like a babbling brook, down on the Polk Street like a little mini rapid, salt water, not good. You worry about them with the I, future? I worry about the future of my children, I do. And the future of the next generation, yeah, I do. A solution is lifting the streets, literally. 
It's extremely expensive, but they see it as necessary, even if the state isn't changing its roads. So you can imagine if this is the roadway and, I'm, and I live here and I'm at the same level and I raise up my street, well, what happens to my house? Homeowners aren't going to be happy about getting water. Right. So what we do is we have something called harmonization. And what harmonization is, we go towards the edge of their property and we gently slope down to the sidewalk so we don't create any adverse condition on the private property. That means that each street and each property is a custom solution. That's just the start of it. Better drainage, dams, pumps, valves, higher seawalls, costly projects with help from the state and federal government. FEMA is granting more than $150 million for flood mitigation in Southeast Florida. Geography differs even across the state. There's no one size fits all solution. So each community is having to figure out what works for them. What works in Hollywood doesn't necessarily work in Tampa or Jacksonville. I think the projections are certainly scary. A lot of them are based on models yeah, and, and predictions. I, I do believe that provided the right implementation of a master plans, whether they are for you know, storm water protection, uh, I think uh, elevating the seawalls and creating a tighter uh, uh, fit, which the city already began doing with this project, uh, I think those numbers should be better. However, there is concern less affluent areas without as many financial resources will struggle to keep up. That's one of many limitations that make this not an easy problem to solve. For example, just building a wall along the coast won't cut it. Underground, Florida is porous with limestone, causing saltwater intrusion. It's seeping up, bubbling onto ground level. That could end in tragedy. Investigators believe saltwater may have weakened the structure for the Surfside condos north of Miami Beach. They came crashing down in the middle of the night in 2021, killing 98 people. Many areas that people live in South Florida were not livable 100 years ago. In the early 1900s, developers dredged the Everglades, an expansive wetland and slow-moving river, to build farms and homes. That's just the beginning of human harm that we're all paying for today. Excessive energy use, planes, cars, ships, and factories are harming the environment sharing the blame for flooding and sea level rise. Increased tropical activity, including hurricanes, add fuel to the fire. That I think is really um, important to underscore is that these issues aren't isolated to the coastal area. In our community, we actually have about 1,800 miles of canals that are part of our drainage and water management system. And that entire system was designed with the intent of being able to drain from inland to the coast or from a higher elevation to a lower elevation. And sea level rise reverses that equation. Dr. Jennifer Hirado is a resiliency officer for Broward County. Governments are hiring scientists like her to find sustainability solutions, knowing everyone in the community plays a part in reducing the problems. The issue continues to creep up the coast. Jacksonville and Tampa have widespread flooding. So does Orlando. St. Augustine's historic district often turns into a river. The condition is ultimately driven by the amount of warming that takes place and the amount of CO2 that's contributing to that warming. And that's a function of um, primary sources for us. Transportation, which accounts for about 50% of our regional and local emissions and uh, the other 50% is pretty much shared between commercial and, and residential real estate. So your opportunities for intervention are, are largely about energy efficiency, renewable energy, clean energy. South Florida, with a population of more than 6 million people and growing, could be foreshadowing what's to come for the rest of the world. And with 1,200 new residents moving to Florida every day and companies from across the world investing big here, solutions big and small 
will have to keep up with the changing climate. In Miami, with photojournalist Josh Morgan, I'm Vic Michalucci for Solutionaries. Be sure to subscribe to Solutionaries to see all our latest videos right here on YouTube.